Hello everybody, my name is Delazar Slick. Welcome. How do you do? And most importantly, let's check in the red and see what the hell they're up to. Anyways. Oh shit. Fuck. <sighs> okay, it's a little bit early in the morning. I'm afraid to yawn. If you complain, shut up. Just shut up. Just shut the fuck up. Anyways, we're checking in the Overly Sarcastic Productions. They are a really cool motherfucker who does really informative stuff over there on that channel. The links will be in the description. Please go down there and support them. This is not like a joke in any way. Go and support the original people who worked on this shit. I'm just here trying to get knowledge, have fun, watch shit, and then give it back to y'all with my take on things. Key. Happy ending was invented. The fairy tale trope, yo weirdos. It has this appealing vagueness to it that lets us just believe our heroes ride off into the sunset and experience some sort of idyllic just reward for all their trouble. Leave our hero. I wonder when the happy ending was invented. The fairy tale trope, yo weirdos. It has this appealing vagueness to it that lets us just happy ending. Sorry, I'm trying to like think of what else they they could be hinting at, and I'm like losing it. Cause I'm, I'm trying to picture it. Fair. What else is there to fairy tale trope about? Yeah, they're saying a happy ending, and then they said uh, the the you know the fairy tale trope you weirdo. So that implies that there's something else it means. Damn it! I'm I'm blanking on this. If you see, if you understand the comment section, tell me. Believe our heroes ride off into the sunset and experience some sort of idyllic just reward for all their troubles, nice mm -hmm. and off screen, so we can't see any details that might spoil the illusion. It just feels like every time I unpack an ancient myth, we get a good hard look at the protagonist's entire life, from their storybook acts of great heroism down to their inevitable horrifying tragic end, frequently due to their own shitty behavior during those aforementioned acts of heroism. Sure, some of them get deified in the process, but that's kind of <laughs> cold comfort. Then again, I guess it's more realistic than nebulous retirement ever after. Greek heroes live interesting lives and that quite frankly never ends well one of the greats that i've managed to overlook so far is mm -hmm, cadmus mm -hmm. founder hero of thebes and frequent co-star in the family trees of a truly impressive smelly europa minos mm -hmm. Polynesius, zeus zeus oh wait a second for a second i was so fucking confused by Zeus being here, that I didn't realize that Zeus is just a dude who's come in to fuck. I was thinking that Zeus was one of his, like, nephews or some shit. I'm like, Zeus? I thought this was just a man. A number of characters we've talked about before. This version of his story comes to us in Ovid's Metamorphoses, <laughs> and I cannot wait to hear about how his life goes horribly wrong thanks to the unjust capriciousness of the gods. Ovid doesn't have a brand, what are you talking about? Our story begins at the end of another one. As we briefly touched on in the Zodiac video, Phoenician mm -hmm, Princess mm -hmm. Europa has had the unfortunate but tragically common experience of being abducted by Zeus, cunningly disguised oh, God. Hulk, who carries Please. her across the ocean to the shores of Crete and emplaces her as its first queen. But in a shocking exploration of the canonically acknowledged shit of Zeus's actions, she leaves behind a confused and grieving family, notably a father who demands that she must be found. He sends Europa's brother Cadmus in search of her and mm -hmm, raises mm -hmm. the stakes by demanding that Cadmus return with his sister or not at all. Unfortunately, due to the aforementioned godly abduction, not at all is going to be his only option. Cadmus seeks out the Oracle at Delphi and asks for her help, mm -hmm, and she tells mm -hmm. him that his main quest line is softlocked, but what he's gonna do instead is he's gonna find this magic cow, right, and follow it across the land until it decides to lie down, and there he's gonna to establish a great kingdom and name it Boeotia. Cadmus heads out and immediately finds a beautiful and- That's really fucking weird. What? No, he's a demigod. I don't think he's a demigod. He gonna be fucked by hair? Hmm, I don't think so. Um, seems like his daughter gets fucked by hair, uh, Zeus, and, and some shit happens. But- Cow. Clearly magical cow and does as the oracle commands, following it on a very long journey until it settles down for a rest in a lush, empty stretch of land ripe for the colonizing. Cadmus sends his followers out to find a source of fresh water so he can make some sacrifices to the gods. Followers who have of course been here the whole time because of how profoundly important they are to the story, with long and successful careers ahead of them just down this river and inside this spooky cave. I love all of their looks of joy and happiness. At the same time, which one of them do we bet is coming back covered in blood and missing two limbs? 
Like, I want to say it's you, but honestly, it probably should be the grizzled old veteran. But it'd be really fucked up to have the get have the little boy with the fucking backpack come back only with one canteen of water. One of the ones like Poseidon. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. But like having the little boy come back with just the fucking canteen of water and everyone else is dead. Wait, what does it say under? We love you, boss! The real destiny was the friends we forged. As long as the one piece never is the power of friendship, I'm okay with that answer. Um when the sun starts setting and Cadmus's guys aren't back yet, he goes to investigate and finds that, horror of horrors, those followers of his have been slaughtered to a man, and they were so important! The cause of their death quickly becomes clear, as emerging from the spooky cave is a giant venomous dragon ready to fight. What follows is a battle of epic rock. proportions, where Cadmus uses such cunning strategies as throwing a rock at it and stab- <laughs> Oh, he said, fuck that- fuck- fuck- your entirety of all these tactics, your mind, your strategies, any of that shit. Big rock go burr, break skull go now, crack spine go crick 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 pow, dead as hell. Fuck yeah. Sorry, I, I, I'm so used to looking at the fucking, sorry. I've been dealing with epic for so long that I've been thinking to myself, oh, what strategy is about to pull up? And then I'm just like, you know what? Fuck the strategy. Beat its ass. Cabinet real good. After a cataclysmic duel, Cadmus successfully slays the dragon and takes a moment to bask in his victory, which is when a spooky voice rings out and tells him if he thinks slaying dragons is funny, his future is about to be hilarious. Before he really has time to mull that one over, a That could be anyone's ominous premonition. Your optimism is adorable. Focus up and, com and compartmentalize. Oh, fuck. Athena pops into the story and tells him he needs manpower thanks to the aforementioned tragic and horrible death of all his followers, so he'd better get busy taking that dragon's teeth and sowing them like seeds. Cadmus obeys because when Athena tells you to do a thing, you do it, and the dragon's teeth sprout into a veritable army of warriors, fully decked out and ready to fight. And fight they- That's really fucking cool, actually. We do the David tactics damn right. Well, David had more like a, sl you know, sling and all that shit. They do. Yeah. Immediately. Each other. The army of draconic warriors just straight up start throwing hands, setting some sort of speedrun record for fastest time between birth and first murder that has been matched except by certain species of parasitic wasp. But as quickly as the battle has begun, it's over, with five warriors remaining with the wherewithal to notice that, hey, wait a second, this entire fight is pointless. So they stop, pledge allegiance to a probably mildly scarred Cadmus, and set- You know what? I can't- hate what he's what just happened because i could also look at athena and just go what the fuck was that and said well i got you really strong warriors but what are warriors if you have to, if you have to train them so you know as soon as they're formed i'm going to give them all the battle experience that they need <laughs> by making them fight other super soldiers out the world <laughs> you know what fuck it if i actually use something like this i might do something similar to this at some point in the story be like ayo I need every single one of you to start fighting. Like, but we just got made two seconds ago. <laughs> exactly. Get the boxing, motherfucker. Okay. Take a seat, plant some teeth, and sprouts. Let the Greek and the heroes show up and have a little thing in. Yeah. Okay, okay. That about building that great city of his. And then we skip forward in time through Cadmus's marriage to Harmonia, the daughter of Aphrodite and Ares, and they start a family. Oh, that's cute. These two are cute. Dear Hephaestus, get better. This bitch ain't liking you. Like, damn. Play together, which handily segues into a quick montage of all of Cadmus's descendants who died horrible, painful deaths because Hera is still mad about the Europa thing. Big names like his grandson Acteon and his daughter Sem. Hmm. Never mind. Hera got all of his kids. Hold up. Is still mad about the Europa thing. Big names like his grandson Acteon and his daughter Semele with a special detour into. So, Dionysus. Hmm. At least your grandson's a god. Now. It cost your daughter. But hey, when your grandson comes around, he can help you party, drink for a little while, and almost forget. I mean, we knew he would get fucked, but I didn't think he would get fucked by Zeus. Um, while Zeus has no, uh, like, 
opposition to going after men, he usually does it. To a fun new story where Cadmus's daughter Eno and her husband Athamas are attacked by the Fury Tisiphone and driven mad by magical venomous snakes, causing Athamas to kill one of their infant sons and drive Eno and their surviving child to leap into the sea to escape him. But thanks to a special act of div What the fuck? Why does his life suck? Poor darling, and it wasn't even a proper crime of passion. Divine nepotism, courtesy of Aphrodite, Poseidon transforms Eno and her son into ocean gods with fun new names and everything. No harm done, all's well that ends well, good thing they had that spare kid lying around. But of course, Cadmus has no way of knowing about that last part, so from his perspective, his children and grandchildren have just been suffering horrible fates non-stop with no reprieve. He wonders if it might be because that dragon he killed was more than just a monster. What if it was sacred to the gods, and by killing it, he angered them somehow? He says, hypothetically, if that were the case, it would be better if the gods just bit the bullet and turned him into a dragon. And somebody's clearly listening because they oblige. Cadmus begins transforming into a big old monster snake. That's so fucked. Also, dear, don't take the wrong way, but your family's communication skills are pretty terrible. Yep. Yep. Honestly, at this point, it, like, dealing with the Greek gods might actually straight be worse than dealing with the titans within the campaign. It's By the way, I'm running a D&D, I'm not running d and I'm running a TTRPG campaign. Um, where we deal with titans that have no relation to Greek mythology. They're just called titans because it's a good word to explain what the fuck they are in terms of power. But, honestly, these fuckers genuinely might be some of the most annoying fucks ever. I swear the Greek gods be pissing you off every day. They shit in your damn cereal, and then they look at you in the face, and as they're tapping their fucking nails on your ivory fucking countertops, because, of course, you started out with wood countertops. You managed to somehow work over the last 40 fucking years to eventually afford better materials for your home. And they're tapping their goddamn nails, cracking the shit. And then they look at you when they have the shit in your cereal. And they say, eat it. Now. Like, they know damn well they are causing you grief and misfortune. But they just want to dig the knife deeper. Just because snake feet first and slow enough that he knows exactly what's going on and that he can't stop it. Which is, yeah, horrifying. But in fairness, what are the gods gonna do? Smite me? Is probably the most blatant tempting of fate I've ever seen from a Greek hero since Jason's pro strat of what's my turbo powerful sorceress ex gonna do? Murder my new wife? But as yeah. Cadmus becomes all snake all the time, his wife Harmonia grabs hold of him and double dares the gods that she bets they can't do it twice. So she also turns into a big snake, panicking all of their royal attendants, but these two dragons are very different from the one Cadmus slew back in the day because they still remember who they are and leave the palace with all the grace of royalty to spend the rest of their days in the wilderness together. Which, honestly, not the worst option. Shit, I may have became a monster. My wife still loves me. And she became a monster too. Also, I'm a furry, so scaly fucking. <laughs> worst options? Nah. Frankly, is probably the closest thing to happily ever after a Greek hero can get. And I don't want the world to see me cuz I don't Arises from the dead. Hey, what's up Lucy? How you doing? Welcome. You just entered in as the end of that video started. Anyways, I'm going to be telling everybody here like, comment, subscribe, check out the original video and if you don't do that right now, I'm going to slap you with the sole of my foot. You, I didn't say kick, I was, I said slap. I'm gonna just hold it upwards, and then I'm gonna rotate my hips so that it slaps you in the mouth. I'm gonna make sure I didn't wash my feet for the first five days before I do it, too. I'm gonna get straight toe jam. Mm hmm Oh, I don't think I've ever actually had toe jam, so I don't, I don't actually know how long it takes for toe jam to form. I don't know. Psst. But, you get the gist, okay? Support the original motherfuckers, and if you don't, um, bad things. <laughs> Fucking bad things. Yeah. Anyways, if you want to, you can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, you can check out the original videos, and I would like you to please support the original. It 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 genuinely would be nice if you did. Um, mainly because I really like OSB and OSB is cool. Cast Turn Undead. 
<laughs> Damn. You fucking mean as hell. I said, get back in the grief. Fuck. Just woke up two minutes ago. Yeah, just a little earlier stream today. Um, just doing what I want. Anyways, I should probably start spilling about, you know, oh my gosh, help me, help me. I am a content creator. Support me. Thank you. I have YouTube membership. If you want to see videos a little bit early, thank you. Um, you can like my video if you enjoyed. Comment because you got something to say. Subscribe because you think that I am somebody you want to come back on the support. And do because you think that I am somebody who is worthy of your subscription. Thank you. Oh, and um, if you see the thing above my head and you want to throw like $2 in the pot so that I can try to afford to get to a new place. Oh, yeah, no, it's apartment. Shit, you think, uh, you think 12K is enough to get a new house? Fuck no. Anyways, I do commissions as well for pixel art and 3D models. I know, right? Anyways, if you look in the description, you'll see the information for that. And funny enough, um, one of the 3D models I've been working on for the longest time, right, is literally big snake dragon thing. So, um, it's honestly on brand with this video. Did I know it was going to be? Nah. But, like, eventually I would come across something like this. Also, um... It looks prettier in the fucking shading. Yeah, please go out, support, check in, lock in, and most importantly, love the original video. Check me out if you want to, but please, do what you need. Oh yeah, I got also a link to my link tree if you want to find me on different socials and websites and all that shit. Including the blue sky. The blue sky is like 45% horny posting. Just letting you know. I check it every once in a while. And if you really want to get into touch with me, you can. Sooner or later, I'm going to be throwing the um Discord link in the description. So that people can actually join the Discord. Yeah. Mm -hmm.